gonna say? This food is so good, I forgot what I was gonna say. for another one of our chatty eat with me videos so please get comfortable grab your food and or your beverage and let's get to it so I promised my daughter that she was getting boba today that's why I got this right here it's taro boba and this is mock duck wrapped with tofu This is the sauce that goes with a mock duck. And I'm glad that they put it in a separate container because a lot of the time when we order food for delivery, if it's very saucy, some of it spills. Sometimes a lot of it spills. So before anything else, I do wanna say bear with me. I mean, I know that my typical demeanor is kind of deadpan anyway, but I'm still recovering from this cold that all of us in the family caught. I'm a little low energy, but I didn't want that to keep me from filming a video today. Our topic, by the way, is lessons in love and relationships. I've mentioned it before as a tarot reader that one of the most common topics that people want a reading on is love and relationships. So this is going to be a combo story time and tips sort of video. I also have jasmine rice, which is perfect because if you didn't know, I am Filipino and while I don't eat rice as much as I used to, I do like it. I'm gonna pour some of this sauce now. I figure this is better than me dipping the food into the sauce and getting it everywhere. Okay, that's good. And before we get started with the chatty stuff, I'm gonna take a bite first. Let's see if this is any good. It's from a Malaysian place. I was also gonna say, related to being low energy, I'm different now when it comes to finding the right words. That's why I'm on the deliberate side when I speak. Since becoming a mom, I've been mom-brained. I sometimes struggle to find the word that I'm looking for, like, there's a word I'm thinking of, but it's shoved at the very back of my head and I'm doing my best to reach for it. And the part of me that wants everything to be perfect would have let that get in the way of me doing this, as in filming videos. I know that in this day and age, there are so many critics online. Maybe there always have been a lot of critics, but they're very vocal now and they pick apart things that, to me, just seem so petty. You don't like the way someone wears their hair? Well, thank goodness you're not the one wearing that hairstyle, right? Why can't you just leave them alone? But I didn't want anything to get in the way of something that could be helpful for someone else or something that brings me joy, something that's a creative outlet for me that, like I said, may also happen to inspire somebody, and I just want to do it even if it means it's imperfect.
Anyway, so, lessons in love and relationships. I got the idea for some of these from doing readings, and some of them come from my personal experience. I figured I'd do a mishmash. Why not? If you haven't met my significant other, he's a love and dating coach. Love, dating, and relationships. He's in the first mukbang video that I did. I made a playlist of the mukbangs that already exist on this channel. So if you want to watch it, I'm going to link the mukbang playlist in the description. So yeah, Josh and I talk about this stuff all the time and he would have loved to be in this video, but someone's got to watch the baby. Anyhow, I actually am genuinely hungry. That's why I'm eating right now and not just taking minuscule bites and talking. But we're gonna get started soon. Okay, so lessons in love and relationships. These are in no particular order. And by the way, this is pretty good. I've had mock duck before in many different ways, like sometimes as pizza topping, other times with a bunch of other vegetables and prepared in a different way. I like it like this. I like this sort of tofu to begin with, the tofu skin that they use to wrap it up with. It's pretty good. Okay, so number one is be wary of committing too quickly. Dude, I've been guilty of this many, many times. And I see it too with many people who come to me for a reading. They meet somebody, there's attraction, and they jump right in. I don't mean jump right in as in they get intimate immediately. You can get physically intimate with somebody, but you're not committed to them. Or at least the level of commitment isn't like, oh, we're engaged. It could be a slower type of commitment because even I want that sort of thing. That's why I have jumped into commitments too quickly. But it could be the sort of commitment where you decide to see each other and while you're seeing each other, it's exclusive. But no one's making plans so far ahead, like six months from now or a year from now. Just enjoy it. Besides, it's a red flag if somebody wants you to commit really quickly. I've seen it many times with people who come for a reading the person they're seeing wants them to commit because that person actually wants something from them. I mean beyond just being in a relationship with them or spending time with them, having fun with them. They want, for example, to live in their house because they're homeless or are about to be homeless. So in connection to that, watch out for love bombing. If you've never heard of love bombing, it's when somebody pours a lot of affection onto you, a lot of attention. They make you feel like you're the most special person in the entire universe. And they don't even know you that well. You might have just met yesterday or a week ago, and yet they're all about you. Super duper sweet, super duper sticky. I don't mean kind of sweet. I don't mean someone who texts you good morning and good night, maybe even good afternoon. I mean, someone who really lays it on thick all the time. People who love bomb typically have motives for doing so because the sooner you fall in love with them, the sooner they can proceed with their plans, whatever that may be. Other than asking to live with you, some of these people might ask for money.
So yeah, watch out for anyone who wants to commit too quickly and keep yourself from falling into the trap of wanting to commit too quickly because if it's meant to be, it's meant to be, right? What's the rush? Number two lesson is pay attention to how you're being treated. This is something that is a little painful to talk about. Not super duper, but it pains me to talk about it because I witness it a lot with people who come for readings that they aren't being treated right. And it's not like you can point it out to everyone. For example, some people have stories of how they're being spoken mainly to. And yeah, it isn't our place as tarot readers to tell them to leave. It's their life. These are their own lessons they're going through. And a lot of the time, people also have an inkling that something isn't right. That's why they come to you for readings in the first place, because they want insights. Also, told you I'm hungry. Hope you're enjoying your food. Also, if you've ever been in an abusive relationship, you might know that it isn't always that easy to leave. Sometimes you feel like your well-being is threatened. And for some, where are they gonna go? That's part of the reason sometimes why some people want you to commit really quickly so that they can keep you all to themselves. And once that happens, now you don't have anyone to run to. So anyway, yeah, all I can say really is to pay attention to how you're being treated and to decide what to do from there because ultimately, it's you who's gonna make the decision to leave if you need to or have to. And even if certain actions might not seem abusive per se, if you feel like you're not being treated right, like they speak to you with disrespect in their voice or they give you the silent treatment, like some people don't know that that just isn't the way to treat someone especially someone you're supposed to love. It's taken as normal, whether it's because it's compared to other ways that they could possibly be treated and it doesn't seem to be so bad, or they grew up being treated that way, thus it seems normal. But yeah, it's a good idea to take note of how someone treats you so that it doesn't keep going down that road, especially if, you know, the relationship is new. You can nip it in the bud. Let's say they genuinely didn't know that they were being disrespectful or what they were saying is hurtful. Then you can teach them that pretty early on. Or if they know that it hurts you and they still continue, well, that teaches you, right? That maybe this isn't something to continue with before you go too far down that road. Now, number three lesson is to watch how you're treating them. This is important for a few reasons, some of which may be obvious to you, such as, of course, we also need to be respectful and loving towards our partner, like we expect them to be towards us. But something else I'd like to mention is, for some of us, different people bring out different traits in us. Like if you don't consider yourself to be snappy or rude, but with this person you find yourself acting that way, why is that? That could be an opportunity for you to do some healing or some shadow work. Do some digging and find out what is triggering you to be that way. It could be an opportunity to work on something from the past, for example, that you might be subconsciously reminded of in this relationship, and it's coming up now. I've had people come to me who are known to be kind, loving, but then with this person they're seeing or this relationship that they're in, they're different. 
they surprise themselves by doing things and saying things that they never have or they normally wouldn't. If you find that happening to you, it's a sign for you to start looking within and see, what is that about? It might be that you're not really happy in that relationship. Maybe you don't want to admit it to yourself. Or like I said earlier, it might simply be an indication that you are being reminded of something that you have yet to heal and work on. Number four lesson in love and relationships. Feel free, by the way, where it applies to link some of these to relationships in general, not just love relationships, because you might be hearing some of these and be thinking, oh, well, that kind of applies to the relationship that I have with a family member or a friend. Number four lesson in love and relationships, it matters that your core principles are compatible. Take note, I said compatible. I didn't say the same. Some of those who have come to me for readings wondering if their relationship is going to last, well, they don't have compatible principles or values with their partner or with the person that they're starting to date. And I'm not saying at all that those with very different principles, you can't make it work. But I'm gonna give you an example of something that's challenging when it comes to that. I can hear my dog, so if you hear any sounds of a canine nature, that's what that is. Anyhow, I'm gonna give you an example of something that could be challenging when it comes to principles, core principles, not being compatible. Someone who's very spiritual, not even religious, but spiritual in the sense of they believe that there's so much more than meets the eye, etc., etc., might not be the best match for an atheist. I know this from personal experience. When I was still on OkCupid, I got matched with a lot of atheists and agnostics because I do lean towards agnosticism, except I also am open to so much more than what meets the eye. I just don't know exactly what that is, or I can't give you very definite answers as to what that power is, or if there even is one to begin with, I'm open to it. That's all I'm saying. But I also pride myself on being logical, hence the high compatibility that I had with a lot of atheists and agnostics. It's just that when I started talking to some of them, they would make it very clear that because of my belief in the mystical or my interest, let's say my interest because I don't even have this firm or very clear belief, I'm open is all really, like I said. But yeah, whenever more mystical stuff would come up, they completely shut down and they say, well, there was one guy at least who said, I don't even know why our match score is this high. It was like 98 or 99, something like that. Or 97. Yeah, something along those lines. And you know what? I'm glad that that guy was resistant to even meeting up because I had said, I'm down to be just friends. And for a moment there, he almost buckled because he resisted. He said, nah, there's no point, there's no use. But after a little bit, he said, well, sure, why not? But the meetup still didn't happen. And I'm glad because as I've grown, I see that being spiritual truly matters to me. And it would be difficult to be with somebody who is completely closed off to that. So if you noticed, I said core principles. There are certain things which I feel are not deal breakers. For example, I'm vegetarian. It's not a big deal to me if the person I'm with eats meat. But I've heard that for some, it does matter. They don't wanna be with anyone who eats meat or animal products. So it's up to you to identify all that for yourself. 
and things that matter a lot to you do need to be discussed early on so that you don't waste time unless the goal is just to have fun in which case who really cares right but if you're looking for a mate a partner then of course it's important that you get that discussion out of the way pretty early on number five lesson in love and relationships is to accept your partner for who they are okay so before you take that to mean allow them to treat you however way they want or to do anything they want even if you're not happy about it or even if it's harming other people no that is not what i meant what i was talking about is when you meet someone and you already know that they're a certain way and you still proceed with a relationship from that point well you knew right like if you're getting with someone who's on the messy side you can't expect them to just because they're with you now and you prefer the house to not be messy they're not gonna be messy anymore that isn't gonna change with a snap of a finger especially if that's a very deeply rooted trait for some they end up leaving because they realize particular traits are not acceptable to them and their partner isn't gonna change. So what else is there for them to do at that point but to leave? But that is something that comes up quite a bit in readings. People are displeased with the way that their significant other is and they're wondering what they can do about it. Well, only they can change and even then they would really have to want to. And it would have to be for themselves, not you, because that isn't gonna last. So it might seem pretty obvious right now while we're chatting about it, but I'm gonna say it. Don't get with someone who loves their alcohol and or recreational drugs if that's something that you don't want in your life because i would say that is one of the most common things that people want or reading about their significant others habits and if they're ever going to change number six don't project your ideals onto your partner or onto the relationship what i mean by that is many of us grow up with these princess fantasies of how we want our relationship to be, how we want our wedding to be. Then we meet someone who we are attracted to and without knowing it or without being consciously aware of it, we've put them on a pedestal. And as the relationship unfolds and the honeymoon stage is over now, we find ourselves disappointed because they're not living up to what we thought they were or what we hoped they were. So yeah, this goes back again to accepting your partner for who they are. It would help to see someone for who they are and go from there rather than thinking that they must be your Prince Charming or Princess Charming or whatever Charming. <laughs> Just because they seemed so perfect and they seemed to get you and you felt so loved by them. Hey, they may really love you and be a super awesome person, just not who you thought they were. So yeah, whenever we get involved with someone, it helps to remind ourselves to see them as they show themselves to us, rather than to see them through our lens. And we all have lenses, be they rose-colored glasses or cynical ones, but we can still make an effort to be as objective as possible. Some people, for instance, when they get a reading, they find it really hard to accept that their significant other has cheated on them. They say they were blindsided, but a lot of the time it's because they kept seeing them through the lenses that they wanted to see them through. Without those lenses or glasses on, it's possible that the telltale signs were there. Number seven, lesson in love and relationships. Healthy boundaries are key. Now, this is one of those that I definitely would say applies to all sorts of relationships, not just romantic. Let me share something specifically 
from my own lessons. Okay, so I am a very private person, but at the same time I recognize that, yeah, sharing what I've learned, what I've been through, it can be helpful to some who can relate to that. And so I still put myself out there. Kindness matters to me, even if I can't exactly make myself be this super friendly, sociable person. Because especially these days, now that I'm a mom, my bandwidth and energy are so taken up by my day-to-day -day that I don't have a lot of time for socializing and the like. Nor do I really want to anyway at this point in my life. It's not one of those things where, oh, I wish I could, but I don't have time for it. No, it isn't like that at all. I actually really do cherish and treasure this time in my life where I have a lot of time with my family and not many other people. I have so much more clarity about this because not too long ago when I was really active on Instagram, I learned about healthy boundaries the hard way. We hear the word boundaries thrown about and mentioned quite a bit, but it was only at that time that I learned to have better boundaries in place. I realized that I was uncomfortable with certain interactions and the direction that certain relationships were going. I didn't feel right about how things were unfolding because I had made myself so available. And that was pretty challenging for me because like I said, I don't have a lot of bandwidth or energy these days outside of being a mom. And yet I was involved in certain activities and relationships that were taking so much more out of me and I had nothing left. I really needed time to recover from that and to this day, my Instagram account is disabled. It was a little much for me, but the good thing is I have learned so much more now about having healthy boundaries in place. I'm clearer now about what I'm okay or not okay with in interactions. And boy, do I have a lot more stories to tell when it comes to boundaries being overstepped without me even knowing. But yeah, identifying where our boundaries are, I would say that's key to having good relationships. Because without healthy boundaries, before we know it, we become resentful. Like just going back to romantic partnerships or relationships for a moment here. Someone who does majority of the chores, when that isn't something that they truly want to do, but they don't speak up, well, like I said, where's that gonna lead? They're gonna be resentful before they know it. If they don't say anything about it, their partner might assume that all is well. And then when they get angry or start giving their partner the cold shoulder, their partner might not have any idea why. Okay, moving on to number eight lesson in love and relationships, be authentic. We already touched on this somewhat earlier, but this deserves more discussion. So remember when I mentioned earlier that when something really matters to you, it's a good idea to get it out there pretty early on? Well, that is part of being authentic. There's no need to hide something that truly matters to you or something that is such a part of you that it's gonna come out anyway. If you have mental health issues, for example, or you tend to get depressed or get panic attacks, it's a good idea for a potential significant other to know that pretty early on. Being authentic isn't what some think it means. For example, I've seen some people talk down on those who wear makeup because you're hiding your real features. Well, dude, you can be authentic, even if you like playing dress up, even if you like coloring your hair, even if, well, if I seem to feel strongly about that, it's because I love playing dress up. Loving the whole playing dress up thing can be part of someone's authentic self. I just wanted to say that that isn't what that means at all. Number nine lesson in love and relationships, actions speak louder than words. So that one might seem a little obvious to you. Well, if it does, take it as a reminder. Remind yourself to pay attention to what someone does and take that as a sign of who they really are versus what they say. There are some sweet talkers out there, but they don't 
walk the talk. There are some people who are pretty eloquent, but it just doesn't match up with who they show themselves to be. Someone can say all they want, oh, I'll never cheat, but then they do. And it happens several times, even if they still claim that they aren't really a cheater. I would say, don't let yourself be cognitive dissonanced into that. Take a look at how they act and what they do and give more weight to that than what they say. I know it might be challenging, especially if one of your love languages is words of affirmation, so you might find yourself sweet-talked over and over again. It may take a few times before the lesson kicks in, but actions over words. That is one of the most frequent topics that comes up when people come for readings because they talk about how a significant other has promised so many times that this won't happen again. And yet it does. Number 10 lesson in love and relationships is know when to leave. So I am not encouraging you here to leave the moment things get rough. There are challenging moments in relationships that don't warrant leaving. But yeah, if you're being mistreated repeatedly, if you feel disrespected, if you feel like you aren't valued, in some instances, it's time to find counseling because if you really want the relationship to work, then it's time to put some work into it. But also, once that you recognize that someone is either not right for you or they'll keep mistreating you over and over again. It could be time to give some thought to drawing the line. I know that for some of us, it feels like we are a failure if we can't make our relationship last, but if it's not right, it isn't right. And the goal isn't about making it last forever as much as it is doing the right thing for everyone involved. I know from some readings that I've done that some people feel like they're a horrible person, and I know this from personal experience too, but yeah, some people feel truly horrible for leaving when someone, when their partner, isn't in a good place. But if you can't take care of yourself anymore while remaining in that situation, it could be time to give leaving some thought. Besides, if a relationship can work out still in the future and both of you want to give it another shot who's to say you can't right but yes we got to take care of ourselves too even if you are a very compassionate person kind and caring you need to take care of yourself too our relationship with ourself is the basis for all the other relationships we have so keep that in mind whenever you feel like you have nothing left to give Maybe it's time to put the attention back towards yourself. And that was it. 10 lessons in love and relationships. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. I'll be back soon. If you enjoy this, take a look at the other videos on this channel in case you resonate with those as well. And if you do, I invite you to subscribe if you haven't yet. Thanks again. Take care of yourself. Bye for now. Lots more diaries of a witchy creative life are coming very soon.